In today's video, we are covering for two ways. We've got two color schemes, both distinctly different. And the techniques can be changed completely for either method, whether you want dry brush, contrast, wash method. Uh, there's something here for everyone. There can be more details at the end, so stick around for those if you want them. And I'm also going to be painting these start to finish, including the bases, which are at the end too. Before we jump in, I just wanted to remind you that we still have a few of our limited edition Halloween release. I've had a few questions about this. It is exactly the same as our normal sets, just with some beautiful cosmetic changes. We've even got some little Easter eggs like the uh, zombie's hand holding a brush coming out of the uh, graveyard there. Gorgeous thing to have and to own, and it's still available while stocks last on the website now. Here we have our two wolves. They have been undercoated with Corax white. Doesn't matter what white you use or pale bone or anything like that. Any of those is fine. We're going to be covering over it anyway. Now, sometimes when you do undercoat models, it shows a multitude of sins that you didn't realize were there when it was in gray plastic. With these models, you really will notice a lot if you've got any um, seal lines on the round parts. So if they're upwards facing in particular, being across its back or across the back of its legs, it really uh, is worth your time to remove those because the moment we dry brush or wash them, in particular, they're texture-based techniques and they're really gonna show up very obviously. Let's go for something a little bit brighter than normal on these. We are going to be making it plenty more darker coming up. So you can base coat this with Series D with smushing. You can do it with a large brush. I'm using a size 4S here or um, anything you've got to hand really. And basically you're looking to base coat all of the fur areas. So um, you can leave the kind of the flesh on um, where the fur has ended. It's up to you or you can have this go over the entirety of the wolf. Uh, it's just a matter of personal preference really. Either of the options is absolutely fine, but looking to get a nice solid base coat, you should be able to get one coat coverage. If it takes you two, that is absolutely fine though. So just as a note here, because we're going over a very pale uh, undercoat and because we're using quite a pale bony color, if you do dilute your, um, your bone color, which is more gas bone in this situation, a bit too much, what it unlocks is the possibility of using it a bit more like a wash ones in the recesses. So if you want to get some kind of bonus free detailing on your wolves and you are, you are using this to paint them, using this as a wash, you can see how dilute it is here, show on one section here. You can actually have it so this runs into the recesses, leaving the raised areas lighter. Now, people get very concerned with using washes as washes and dry brush paints as dry brush paints and stuff like that, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with sneaking some extra properties out of the paints you're using. So that's just a cool way to kind of, you can tie the fleshy areas in like that very easily, uh, but they won't look exactly the same as the first. So it's a way for having coherency and difference on the same model with the same paint and all you've used is just a little bit more water. So it is absolute magic. So here you can see visually the difference between sticking with the white and just painting the fur, which looks fine, or on this leg or indeed this side, using the uh, paint water down as a wash. Either of them is fine. You get more contrast this way. So if you're going for like a classic look, then perhaps this is the way you'd want to go more. I'm going to grab Rhinox Hide, which I don't use often because I love the warm brown so much. And I'm going to mix that in with a bit of the more gas bone there but actually to keep it a little bit more drab, we've got Zandri Dust. Now I'm sticking with base paints here, you may note, and that basically is because I want really good coverage and I'm lazy. So <laughs> that's a, a great reason to carry on using them. Now what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna basically cover a large proportion of our previous step. Again, I'm using it diluted a little bit more than I would do normally. And that's one of the joys of working from a lighter base coat than you have worked with previously. Um, like it working from black, we're working from white and we're going towards darker colors rather than towards lighter colors, which is not so often done in miniature painting. For our next step, we've got basically a 50-50 mix of the Rhinox Hide and Zandri Dust. Still been quite diluted with water, just as the previous step. We're looking to cover a portion of our previous layer. You can make it wetter if you want to kind of maintain more of the detail of the previous layers. Uh, Rhinox Hide has extremely good coverage though even for a base paint, it's got pretty nuts coverage. So um, you'll need to dilute it a fair bit if that is what you're looking to achieve. And as you've probably guessed, the final stage is just pure Rhinox Hide. Now you could absolutely do another stage, which was Rhinox Hide mixed with black or something like that, particularly around the tips of the ears or the nose. I think there'd, there'd be some benefit to that, but I'm electing not to in this one. And I'm just gonna concentrate this towards the top of the model. Now, if your previous layer hasn't dried, like mine hasn't, 
Uh, again, that's up to you. Mine's just gonna end up kind of fuzzy blending into uh, the thicker parts of the wolf's fur. I'm okay with that. The wash that we're gonna be using on these is gonna be quite an interesting one. We're actually gonna wash all of it and do some wet blending in the middle. So we're using two different washes. We're not mixing them together from the get-go, but we're having one ready to add to the other at later stages. So we've got Seraphim Sepia, and then we've got the Contrast Nate White Leather, which is much stronger. They're going in separate tubs, and we're gonna use a little bit of Lamy Medium to dilute the first one. So with our first wash, it's been diluted, like I said and we're using that sparingly towards the lower parts of the model. Now this should go with our selective wash that we use with the bone and kind of double up and give us a really nice level of efficient detail, basically the, what, what feels like for free. So I mean, this wash has been thinned and I'm using it thinly. I'm working from the bottom and I'm working up. This model is really starting to come together now. What we're gonna do is we're still gonna cover our model for the great part, with exactly this mix all over. However, I'm going to introduce the moment that I've covered over all the light bits, which is now. Now we've got that tail. I'm gonna introduce a little bit of snake bite leather to this mix, and the rest of it is gonna be done with a 50-50. Now you wanna be careful. The moment you do this, this is a stronger mix. It's a darker mix. Uh, do not take that down the rest of your model. It's you, like you can fade it out towards the middle, but I want this to be safe for the upper sections. That's the finished effect. Obviously, we've got some detailing to go. Now you can do the detailing step that I'm gonna do at the end. You can do it before the final wash, hit everything at once, uh, entirely up to you. I want them to stand out a little bit more though. So I'm saving the teeth and the eyes and the claws for the last step. So for wolf number two, our first step is Fenrisium Grey. Now do feel free to dilute this with a little bit of Corax White if this seems like too much for you. Now what I've tried to demonstrate here is the difference between using it more as a wash, that paint you can see there, I've retained more of the texture of the model and on this side I've retained less and it's more of a flat base coat so that's just kind of a, vis a visual representation of the difference between diluting it more or not. So for our next colour I'm mixing a bit of Thunderhawk Blue with our Fenrisian Grey keeping in the cool gray spectrums, all these Space Wolf colors, which I mean, let's face it, is pretty appropriate here. And hopefully I don't forget, uh, we can use Corax white for this, but I've got another white out currently. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Finrigian gray, and I mean a smidge, a tiny bit of the white. And on the lower sections, of the fur, I'm going to be doing a little bit of dry brushing, just a tiny bit. Okay, so following the dry brushing, we've got that previous mix with a little bit of the Thunderhawk in there. And just like with our last wolf, we're going to selectively uh, kind of reduce the area that we've hit with color. So when I get to the point where there's a little bit less left on my brush, I go to my water pot take off some of the excess because I've made the brush quite wet and that is then used to kind of fade out these areas a little bit. Okay, so it's time for some pure Thunderhawk Blue. For this stage of dry brushing, we're not gonna be lazy and we are gonna rock out the dampening pad because I want it to be smooth. There we go, we're good. Um, what you just need to do is take the previous step before the one that you've done. So I've just completed the Thunderhawk step so prior to that was the Fenrisian step, and what I'm gonna do is dry brush it with Fenrisian gray, just like we dry brushed the Fenrisian gray with the white. All right, so we've got a tiny bit of Fenrisian on our palette, working off the excess, and then just dry brushing the fur. Now I'm going against the grain of the fur, and what I mean by that is sometimes you won't know which direction that is, but in particular this midsection here, I think pretty obviously, against the grain involves hitting it from the back up, which feels like the bottom up. So all of our previous step, is just gonna get lightly dry brushed with this Fenrisian. Now, if you took that dry brush and took it all over the model, including the very top of it, you could absolutely just stop there if you wanted a quick dark wash at the top of it or whatever would uh, absolutely get you to where you need to go for a tabletop standard. We're gonna take it a tiny bit further though. We have mixed a little bit of dark Reaper in with the Thunderhawk Blue. This is gonna be significantly darker than our previous step, so I'm just gonna keep it to the very top of the model. You know the drill by now. Pure Dark Reaper next, diluted as ever. But you can be quite dark with this. 
and you could add in some black as well. Okay, so as I outlined in the previous one, the dry brush for the Dark Reaper stage will be the previous color, which was Thunderhawk Blue. Rather than adding in black, I'm actually gonna add in a bit of inky white darkness, which has got a gorgeous inky, not to be confused with inky by ish, but inky uh, color to it. And that's gonna be used on the very top sections. For our final dry brush on that quite dark top part of this model, I'm gonna be using Thunderhawk Blue. Now, the reason for that is that I don't think the Dark Reaper will show up over the Inky by Darkness. They're both very dark paints, as is. And in fact, there might be an argument for even involving a little bit of finishing Grey or something with a Thunderhawk, but let's see how it goes from the offset. I think we're gonna be okay here. That's good. Just adding another level to that. We don't want a flat, dark area and just this one dry brush alone that's a nice color combination, don't have to be too careful. Just this one dry brush alone is enough to bring it right into an acceptable spectrum. So actually just to get a additional, slightly lighter contrast step, I'm gonna take some of our Fenrisian Gray, mix it into my brush that's still got some of the Thunderhawk Blue within it, mix it in the same part of the palette, which has Thunderhawk Blue on it. And I'm gonna use that just to carefully pick out the steps, particularly in this flat middle section of the back. I think there's a benefit to that and the top of the tail. The other areas are kind of hyper textured around this fluffy bit, so they've got picked out quite easily by the dry brushing anyway. So just wanted to note here, I have mixed uh, two different types of texture paint. I've used different colored ones to make it particularly obvious. So I've got a smooth one and one with sand in it. And I've used them on the same base. That's an idea I got from Dan Osborne on Instagram, I believe. It'll be linked somewhere on the screen right now. We're gonna leave those for some drying time and then we'll finish off the bases. These are getting sprayed with money tour and varnish and I'm doing it the lazy way. So they've been masked off with a four drill bag just to protect the model so they don't get touched by the varnish. So I'm just using our Mars Desert basing tutorial colors for the basing on this guy. Uh, if you want a more in-depth tutorial on that, then do feel free to click the link. Um, we'll be rattling through this pretty fast. I'm just using a warm scheme to kind of complement the warmer wall. Absolute gold level top tip here. If you've got bad bits of your base, that's where your tuft should go. So hiding that dodgy bit next to his foot. And then this bit here that I've struggled to reach with my dry brushing due to uh, its position. Don't worry about it. We'll put tough there. Here we're using our super quick ICTM bases mix. I'm just taking a little bit of neat flesh terrors red, which is a very bloody color, deep, 
deep kind of sanguiny blood and adding some little areas of detail on my dude. Completely the optional. I'm also going to be using this to hide some of the areas of the mouth that I wasn't quite happy with. Very convenient. I can even put a couple of little spots on the base if you wanted. Little details like that really do add a lot. All right, we are done. So both of those are super successful and you could combine the techniques any way you wanted. You've got two very different sets of colors, but the techniques are completely universal. All right, so we are done. These came out really nicely. Very simple techniques. Uh, one slightly faster, one slightly slower, but what I really, really want to stress here is that you can achieve whatever you want um, from these two techniques, however you like. So you can mix up the colors, can use completely different colors. You could be doing a bright, autumny, auburny, orange wolf, uh, really wouldn't matter. And I do recommend that you go and just have a little bit of a Google of um, what wolf fur looks like. Um, I Googled gray wolves uh, for my second one and I felt it really helped me get some ideas of exactly where to put the highlights, like take inspiration from nature. It's there to use however you see fit. So um, that's one thing to note. The other thing to note is in terms of like whether you dry brush, whether you don't dry brush, how many steps you use, um, how dark you go towards the end, um, anything like that. You can take either of these techniques, blend them together as much as you want or take bits or not, you know, adapt it for your own use and you can pretty much uh, approach models like this or fur in general in any way armed with uh, these available techniques. So starting from a light base coat rather than a dark face coat and then working your way up, we worked our way down. It really does open up a lot of stuff in terms of not having to worry too much about how perfect your base coats are. So I was going through the spectrum of darker colors um, all the way to pretty much black. In the case of the gray one, we used Inky by Darkness, which really, really dark color. Um, with them a little bit dilute, the texture of the fur just showed through. And we're gonna be exaggerating that with dry brushing anyway, but it's the same, it's basically the same techniques as dry brushing, but you do it by emission rather than by addition. So rather than hitting those raised edges, you are covering those raised edges less wash style. And there is no reason not to use that to your advantage when you can get away with it. Now, a solid base coat a lot of the time is exactly what you need, but when you don't need one, um, it lets you do things slightly more softly, slightly more organically, and you're working with the model rather than against it there. Also, it's quite good for speed painting. So just something to bear in mind um, in your future projects when you're approaching uh, not just fur, but like um, anything that has engraved detail, um, ingrained detail, sorry, so like wood, uh, um, metallics, uh, if you, you're kind of washing those or something like that, um, let the texture push through just like you would do on basing, let the texture push through and have those raised areas lighter and you can absolutely let that work to your advantage. So thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you liked it. Please like, comment, subscribe, let us know what you'd like to see next and we will see you soon for the next painting video.